Hi everybody, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. I've absolutely no idea where to start with that one. However, it has finished, believe it or not. Newcastle United, four. West Ham United, three. And somehow we've got to go through this, so this is the last word. Yeah, we are here at St James's Park, a seven goal thriller, Saturday lunchtime. Oh, I'll tell you what, I do love a Saturday lunchtime kickoff. <laughs> I'm here with Lee, I'm here with Andy, with Sam. Me, Sam, and Andy have done a bit of the match reaction, so make sure you give that a watch as well. I have no idea where to start, but Lee Lawler, <laughs> before we do anything, how have we won that? I've got no idea, to be fair, my voice is gone. I've just pure emotion at the end, I was nearly crying. Oh, wait, mate, don't you? I was nearly, it's just, it just everything going through because I just didn't see us winning that game. It was just everything going against where the referee was against where the day was absolutely shocking. Uh, the injuries were against were once more, which I'm sick of talking about, but unfortunately we'll have to bring it up. I just thought the whole, it was us against the world today and we won. We, we did. Won, we won against the world today. Andy, let's talk about that team news. Oh, we could... And happy birthday present for that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, happy birthday in the week for Andy. It's been a week, your birthday. Gee. When we pick up a win yesterday and pick up a win now, yeah. may as well keep celebrating. Definitely. Um, Andy, let's talk about the team. Um, Jamal Lascelles came in from the start for Sven Potman, obviously the injury, which we're not talking about because I don't want to get the mood down. <laughs> and uh, Tina Livermento started at right back, didn't end at right back. Uh, didn't actually end the game. We'll mention that a bit later. Going forward, it was kind of who was going to who was going to be in that forward three in terms of the right hand side, and Jacob Murphy got the nod. What did you make of the team section before the game? I think the team put out was the best it could have been. Obviously, we've ended very different of the starting lineup, but I don't think anyone could have knocked it going forward. I mean, there was maybe the the Lascelles coming in and Dan Burns staying out left back. I you know there was a few shouts for. Uh, Dan Burn to be starting as that left centre half, obviously left footed himself, and then starting a Lewis Hall, which I think the way he's played today, he's more than well stated his case uh, going forward. But yeah, the, t the team that started, I don't think anyone could disagree with. West Ham, strong team, very strong team. Yeah, they're strong, team. strong all over the park. Really, really like the midfield. Really, really like uh, their forward players as well. Um, but it is a very, very strong outfit. Who did you? pick out as their danger man before kickoff. Well, we know full well it's Kudos, does, isn't it? He was just an unbelievable player. Our right hand side just couldn't cope with him today. Um, I, I, well, we were coping with him until the sales is injury and then how made the wrong decision in my view. Um, yes, Livermento can play left back. Doesn't mean he should be playing left back. Um, Kraft was all wrong for it today. Um, him and Murphy was an absolute disaster and would be better suited in the championship. Um, the, the, everyone knew in the stadium knew it should have been Hall that got the nod, but I, I don't know why. I mean, after that as well today, the situation has rectified itself, but Hall has to start on Tuesday against Everton. He has to. Well, what more can he do? But well, Kudus, Kudus was was phenomenal today. Yeah, he was. We'll talk about. I want to talk about Lewis Hall, Harvey Barnes, and the, the second part of the final word, or the last word rather. Um, Lee, what a start for Newcastle. It seems like such a long time ago, but Newcastle won a penalty two and a half minutes on the clock. Anthony Gordon just gets in front on the wrong side of the defender and wins a penalty. And it's Alexander Rizak, and you know what happens next, he puts it in the back of the net. Perfect start. Before anyone got into the comments, we put the tallest person on the hill. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we have done that. We'll put the shortest. Yeah, let's swap round. Let's swap round. There you are. Yeah. We'll probably, now, Andy probably looks almost same level. Nearly. Uh, <laughs> VR long long check wasn't it it was a good two and a half minutes or so but it was for the offside not the actual foul though uh, it was it was it was clearly a foul because he pointed straight away um, <laughs> well, we'll talk about that ref in a minute but um, a long long wait he was given it just to check for the offside thankfully I could hear the 10 eye today which was much better because sometimes I don't know what's going on in the stadium and this is these sort of things is for, an, for a video for another day but cool as ice isn't he Alexander Isak and one it look great shot yeah, it, was a, it was a fantastic start, but West Ham had the moments, Andy. Um, the, the man that was really trying to dictate play in terms of a West Ham point of view, you know, Kudos was obviously doing so many good things. So. Can, I, can I point out as well for West Ham, he was, he's the best player on the pitch. I oh, he was, 100%. Newcastle players, Kudos by far outshone everyone today. No, what he, a player. He shouldn't have been on a losing team. However, Lucas Paqueta was the man that really made that first goal for Mikel Antonio. What a ball. First time pass over our defence, breaks the offside trap and Mikel Antonio. Has he got the bottle? Has he got the nerve? Well, he did, and he put it back in the back of the net, 1-1. I'm not going to say it's against the run of play, but 
same old Newcastle a little bit with that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was sloppy. Um, I think everyone in the Gallagher was more or less determined it was offside. No check, obviously we'd been miles on. Um, just it, we're sloppy, we're shut off, which we've been like we've been punished for a lot this season. And you know we've had a mixed mash of defences. It's it's easy to point fingers when we'd literally just switched. Uh, Dan Bernard came inside. Obviously Tino had switched over the left and Crawford came on. But we're looking in trouble from the minute Lascelles went off, and we got we got rightfully punished in my eyes. You're right about Paqueta, it was brilliant. Kudos has been fantastic today, and you're right about him not deserving to be on the losing team, but he is. <laughs> he is, and I'm glad he is. And at that moment, it was like, well, how are Newcastle going to retaliate? And it was a little bit, of, I thought Newcastle had the moments, I thought West Ham had moments. I thought West Ham shaded the first half of them, being brutally honest. But Bruno does hit the crossbar. Gordon no, I, just, no I, just, I don't think they did. I think going in level would have been about right. Let's not forget Bruno hit the crossbar, which looked an absolute peach from the moment it left his foot. I think going in level would have been about right, but obviously the referee had other ideas. As well as that, that first goal, Kraft's all out of the place. Yeah. He plays them on side. And the second goal, I don't know what Kouras has got. So, picking on little eight-year-old boys. I don't know if you've seen the replay of that, but he goes up with the ball boy and has a go at him. What's, yeah. that, what's that about? Yeah. I, well, I want to touch about the second goal in a second, but I just, I just, I thought, I thought you look at Newcastle, they had their moments, but I just thought West Ham looked more dangerous going forward. I think Bowen had some moments. I think Kudas had some moments. Antonio held the ball up really, really well throughout the whole game. But I know you want to talk about the second goal because it's, 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 we'll, we'll describe the goal and I know you want to have a real go at the referee because it's, it's poor, it's amateur refereeing. Yeah. But, you, West Ham win a free kick. There's no argument about the free kick initially. But Fabian Scher is still down. And with a head injury. With a head injury. And he's holding his face. Paqueta plays a quick free kick, which in every normal world he would be entitled to do if it's not a head, head injury. Head injury, rather. Plays the ball to Bowen, who gets past Team Livermento. Plays it on a play to Kudos. And Dubravka gets some sort of hand of it. Well, I haven't seen it back whether or not it should have been saved properly. But it goes in the back of the net. Why is the referee allowed it? I don't know. So, so it's, it's the wrong question to ask, really. Why is the referee allowed it? Because I don't know. Okay, why has well, he not stopped it? Because he's an absolute fucking drip. And he'll be refereeing in the, in the EFL next week. It's a disgrace. Absolute shocking. The refereeing standards in this country. Howard Webb needs to get his head out of his own backside. Because it's just pathetic. I don't know why he's allowed that to happen, and it's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely disgusting. Stoppage time in the first half as well. Absolutely pathetic referee, and he's panicked. The referee himself has panicked because they've took a free one, and instead of going, no, hold on, head injury, let's just take it back, calm down, he's gone, oh, yeah, okay. He's panicked, his arse has dropped. So do, you he's, think, do you think he's realised that he's made a mistake and he knows he can't go back on it? Possibly, you'd have to ask him that, but that's not going to happen. We'll wait and see a, a heavily staged programme in a couple of weeks with Michael Owen and Howard Webb to decide for the absolute shit show that we've just witnessed. But we had this the other day, this referee had no control of the game. We had this the other week with Michael Salisbury when we were at Bournemouth at home the other week, 2-2. He had no command of the game. It was weak refereeing, weak refereeing. All right, All right pal, loving the face paint. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it is, and we've, and we've gone down 2-1. That's, that's forced the issue. <laughs> Sorry, that's forced right. the issue at half time and we had to come out and we were exposed. It's, um, yeah, shocking. Jack, it has to be talked about because we've seen it years ago for the Matt Rich incident in the championship. That's almost on the same level playing field. What's, 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 Refer- he, what's he done he so he, wrong? He doesn't know the rules because he's given the free yeah. kick. That's the thing. He doesn't just allow play on because West Ham have asked, can I play quickly? They've said yes, so he's obviously seen it. But Fabian Shea's lying on the floor. Whether it's making a meal of it or not, I think he does. I think Andy's going to agree with us on that. But the fact is, the referee, how does he know that he's got a hinge? Yeah. Is it serious? He doesn't know that. So for him to allow to play it on, that first of all, it drags Fabian Shea out of that position at yeah. centre-back where he would have covered and quite clearly cleared it. And secondly, he doesn't know the basic rules. If there's a player doing with a head injury, you don't play on. Simple as that. Yeah. You do not play on. That is an absolute fucking disgrace of a decision. And Howard Webb, well, I'll keep it clean. Yeah. Do better, man. Yeah, it is so, so poor. Um, just the last thing before we touch on to the second half, Andy Jamal Lascelles, bad, bad injury, 10 minutes in. Well, I say bad injury. It looked like everybody thought he was going to be out for six months and then he was off for six minutes and then we don't know what's kind of happening after that. So, it, it, it looks like he'll be out for a few weeks. I, if, I, if I'm a medical genius, I'm not, but it, he could come back on. He tried to play it. He tried to run, run probably, it off, you're essentially. Probably, you're probably better off than the staff at the club at the minute. Yeah. Um, but when you look at it, that's the first injury of the day, Andy. 
Jamal LaSalle's getting that injury, which is not what you want. Well, the fact that he's went off, like, properly came back on, then went off, I mean, send one up, he's, he's probably dead. Yeah, that's that's the, the course of how our injuries have been this season. I think it summed up our medical staff this season, the fact he was allowed to come back on. Um, the fact that they let him have a run about on the sideline before he came back on, he was quite clearly wasn't right in the fact he was down that long and his reaction to his initial injury showed enough that he shouldn't be coming back on the pitch. And, and he's not the only one that's unfortunately gone off, you know, uh, Miggy's went off, Tino's went off as well, and it just shows it's not just the team that needs a bit of an overhaul in the summer. The medical staff. And, the, and the you've just got to look at the Botman situation. Yeah, well, how exactly, can you how exactly. can you allow a lot? I know you say it's, it's a probably the player's decision, but how can you allow an injured player to play on? Well, that's what it is. The bloke next to me says, "How have they let him come back on and play six minutes?" So in six minutes, they let Botman play for four bloody months with an ACL injury. So it's just something's got to change in the summer. They know how intensive Eddie Howe's football is, and if the medical staff are forcing players to come back or they aren't reading the injuries properly something needs to be done for the long run 100% let's move on to the second half still got so much more to talk about um, the first thing I don't really want to talk about is a West Ham goal sorry Sam um, why come I have to talk about their goals all the time but you get to talk about Harvey Barnes as winning goals yeah. so there I you know, go. I know there you go yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look their, their third goal came from our corner what, we started so well getting that corner but how is it a case that Jared Bowen had the whole freedom of St James's Park towards Leeds' end because our right hand so at that point in time our right-hand side in particular and our back line was an absolute shambles. Um, yeah, again, Murphy and Kraft totally, totally exposed the back line. Just, uh, again, Livramento is um, can play left-back but shouldn't have been. That wasn't the right call. Kraft with, oh my word, appalling. Um, and Livramento's injury has actually forced the issue to bring Hall on, who did so, so well. But yeah, obviously it was Bowen, wasn't it, who had the, the freedom of St James's and, and, and does what you expect him to do and slot it home when we thought we were dead and buried. We thought the season was over at that point. I know I got a lot of stick in the week for putting a video out on the channel saying the season wasn't over and there's plenty to play for. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, them people, right. they might be right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, and uh, two lads in the Gallagate, um, you know, the usual get the badge in, like, walked out at 70 minutes. I hope they're having a long look at themselves this evening. Yeah, and at 3-1, you're thinking, right, what could Eddie Howe do, Lee Lawler? What can he do to get Newcastle out of this? And he, he, he makes a brave decision, and I'm going to call that because of the fact we're thinking when Lewis Hall comes on and he takes Emil Kraft off, is it a case of we're going to do wing-backs and play out of the back? He said, no, I'm going to put Jacob Murphy right-back, I'm going to put Lewis Hall left-back. Elliot Anderson came on and gave us that energy, which we were missing. Willock didn't really have that today, unfortunately. It wasn't, wasn't the, the game for him, unfortunately, today. And then Harvey Barnes. Those substitutions changed the game. And why were they not, why were they not starting? Why were they not brought on earlier? I think it's with Barnes. I think it's fitness. I, yeah. I, I read Harvey Barnes. I've championed him. Other people haven't. I think he's a player that will score goals. I think he's very similar to Gordon. Probably Gordon's on another level up from him, but... Look what Harvey Barnes did. It's not the first time. It's just we need him fit, and it's a story of three quarters of the squad that haven't been fit. But we needed to some to, to go our way. And look, I think even West Ham fans will probably have a go at the referee because I think David Moyes at one point he got, got, got booked for the ref stopping the uh, their advantage. I think over on the left side. But we got a bit of a bit of luck. It was an, again the VAR decision one that he went to the uh, the touchline came back you would, you, you would have had a decent view because you were quite lower, yeah, lower down was it what, would, what, what did you think I've just seen Gordon rolling around I thought was there enough contact or was it just any contact in the box it. as a penalty couldn't see it from where I am I just couldn't and then the, the, well the thing is we criticise VAR but VAR give us two penalties today but the referee had an absolute well, one, stink one, on, one on, was given on field but yeah I, like you I didn't referee, again we haven't referee we haven't it's seen the referee today that, that just so many catalogue of errors you need to drop because he's an absolute disgrace. I've said that already before, but well, I was. And I was, he's got a special nickname for him anyway, hasn't he? Yeah, what was I your was, nickname I, of the ref? Oh, shit skin Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to come back out and have a. Uh, if we didn't win the day, all my target was going to be the ref because yeah. there's so many things he got wrong the day, but yeah. cool as ice, carbon copy, put in the corner, 3 2. And then, because at that stage, West Ham was singing, giving us a bit of stick, sit down if you're 3 1 down and stand up if you're 3 1 up. That bit of goal, because let's face it, the atmosphere was absolutely shocking at that stage. It was just flat. It was it was shell shock. Yeah. Got that goal and it just boom lifted one. It did, and at three two, Andy obviously Alexander Isaac takes a penalty. 
doesn't matter if it's Alphonse Ariola or Lucas Fabianski, it, the same result goes in the back of the net. 3-2, the energy was lifted. Can Newcastle United get that next goal? What a ball from, uh, from uh, Alexander Izak. It sees Harvey Pons make that unbelievable run. He just timed his run to perfection. Everybody in the whole stadium knew he was on site. It was just whether or not he had the composure to get it past Fabianski. He did have Anthony Gordon not a million miles away from him, so if he did miss and didn't make the sweaty, if you like, in terms of FIFA, <laughs> um, there would have been a lot of questions, but he put it in the back of the net and it was game on at 3-3. Yeah, calm, cool, composed from, from both goal scorers today. Harvey Bonds, I've, I've said before in the match reaction, he's what we've been missing. Someone that can come in, drag inside, because we don't play a number 10. And that's what I think sometimes when we go forward, we miss that creative midfielder. So we we heavily rely on our wingers to be able to come inside and create chances for themselves. And Harvey Barnes has showed today he's more than capable of, uh, capable of doing that. And you know, with the injuries that we've picked up today, places are going to be up for grabs now. We don't know how long people are going to be out for. We never know with our medical staff. It could be the Anthony Gordon case where they play the next game. Or it could be the case of Trippier where, you know, apparently he was meant to be back after the international break and still not there. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is with Gordon as well, he definitely misses next week. Well, yeah. I say next week, it's literally three days' time. So there's there's Barnes straight yeah. in. Yeah, well, exactly. And the fact he's just composure just going forward. He's a great finisher of a ball for a wing as a... I'm delighted to see him back and hopefully he'll start on uh, start on Tuesday night against Everton as well. And at 3-3, can Newcastle get the winner? Can they hold on? Can the defence kind of be stable enough to at least get a point? I remember Sean Longstaff having a, a, a shot slash, a slash cross and Harvey Barnes puts himself in there but not the ball. Just couldn't get there in time. But you can never keep a good man down, Sam Milner. And Harvey Barnes at 3-3. Yeah, Sam, please tell me about Harvey Barnes. What? Because you're not a big fan of him, are you? No, I know. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you? Like I've always said, very good player. I've always said he's not quick for a winger, but as I said on the match reaction, like Nobby Solano told us on our podcast, the first two yards are in here, and he showed for the equal uh, for the equaliser. He's shown in incredible intelligence to anticipate the run, timed it to perfection, the coolness, the poise to to bury it under immense pressure. Not everyone would have um, would have buried it so comprehensively. We saw that yesterday in the charity game, um, <laughs> uh, and. The, the finish for for the winner, there was a 3-2 West Ham had gone and just to touch upon your point about the atmosphere lacking a bit when we were 3-1 down, there was nothing for the crowd to feed off. It, wor it, ha it works both ways and there was nothing, there was two ridiculously shit shots, from one from Longstaff, one from Isaac, which were heroically awful and the, 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 it, it was very close to turning but as we say, got that penalty in 3-2, there was only one team winning it. Yeah. That we were, we were all over it. And like Luton, where when we got it back level, we kind of stepped off a little bit perhaps. We couldn't find that extra gear. We found that extra gear today. Harvey Barnes was absolutely superb and absolutely dispatched his two chances with a plum. And the only thing was the nervous weight of the two hours stoppage time we seem to have played across the game today but we, we did it incredible yeah. incredible it, it and also i just want to point out as well there's a the lewis hall situation going forward he looks great on that left side Elliot Anderson Elliot as well. Anderson. superb we had harvey barnes so it was basically we had three it's sometimes three wingers it's sometimes we're just going on that side and then that was a target that we were doing it was, and it worked. It was a bit like the entertainers. That's, that was, that it was a bit like the entertainers. Like the, obviously the different different types of teams, but it was that. But I just want to be, I'll let you talk in a second, Sam, but I just want to talk about Anthony Gordon's impact in that goal, that fourth goal. To get Kurt Zuma to kind of just shrug him off a little bit and you know just do the basic stuff well. And then you play it on a plate for Harvey Barnes, who, puts, who smashes it. And it was just pandemonium after that. Yeah, you're right to pull me up about that one because I didn't mention Anthony Gordon. Uh, that's why he's an England international. And that's why he deserved to be an England international. Never, never, never say die, never give up. He's a little rat of a thing, but he's our rat of a thing now. Um, you wouldn't have thought he was a scouser. You would have thought he was a Geordie playing for that shirt. And that's the biggest compliment I can give him. Absolutely incredible. Um, uh, what a day. Incredible, okay. incredible. But um, just what I was about to say about Lee's point and about your point of on our left-hand side playing wide and having three wingers, essentially. That was our own problem on our right because Murphy was playing so narrow Kraft doesn't have the speed to get up and down, up and down. And I said to you in the first half, if we're going to play like that, Murphy may as well play right back. And he did. And he did a lot better. Obviously, defensively, he's still lacking a bit, but it didn't matter because it was all us, one-way traffic. But yeah, as soon as we got the whip back, there was just only one, one team winning it, and it was us. And what an incredible day.
The only downside is Anthony Gordon did pick up a, a second yellow card, and I mean when he kicked the ball away, he kicked it about four yards. But the no, ref, it's, the, it, 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 it's 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 a stupid. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, Anthony Gordon was arguably man of the match today, arguably, but that was just not the right thing to do, Andy. With you, <laughs> you're just like, don't do that. And, 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 yeah. and also, sorry, but in there, Andy, he just want to miss the Everton game. Yeah, uh, but exactly, he, he'll want he'll want to prove a point, but. It's one of them, you know, he's probably got caught up in the game moment before three up, dying seconds where you're trying to claim any little bit of time, as you'll see in the full match on uh, Monday between us and Lord of Mags. <laughs> it's a certain, uh, I could have probably had a shot, couldn't I? And they yeah. just decided to pass it back to the keeper. But yeah, I don't you know, know any, any little time wasting opportunities I'm all for, but it's unfortunate we'll miss him now for, I don't know if because he's picking up a book on it, it might be an extended bar now, but... I mean, who knows? I mean, in the good news, Bruno's not got booked. I don't know how on earth, because I thought at one point when he's walking away from Paqueta, he was going to turn around and chin him. And I, I was like, I was at one point when I think it was either, I think Kudos had the ball towards the end. I'm thinking, just take him down, Bruno. Take the foul, take the foul take Bruno. The foul, take the yellow. <laughs> oh no, it's no, Bruno. It's Bruno. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but after all that, it did finish Newcastle United four, West Ham United three. Now we've tried to cover everything game management could have been better in stoppage time there yes. was there we, we were trying to get a fifth goal instead of, instead of taking it to the corner that could have been yeah. better but i think it was there though i think a fifth goal was there to take I, do, I think they've said never see a die and it was just to, to be honest i think it was probably the right thing to do they look sluggish trying to move forward they, they look like they're exhausted all their options and i think we we're unlucky not to get a fifth we probably could have done better on on the break after the fourth but at the end of the day, we've, we've won 4 we 3 in a game which feels like we've taken it and absolutely just robbed them blind. Uh, we, 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 said, we certainly have, and it did look. It finished Newcastle United 4, West Ham United 3. We've tried our best to describe what's happening, how we could have done it better, and the over, overall just general, I don't know, summing it all up. But one man who could probably do a little bit better is Eddie Howe, and here is Eddie Howe. In my time here, I think that's right up there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of emotions in that game. I mean, it was. We were swinging all over the place, really, ups and downs, injuries sending off, but uh, just brilliant from the lads. Brilliant camp comeback when it was a you know, real challenge at 3-1 down. Mark of the players, because when you're in that moment, when you're 3-1 down at home with the recent run we've been on and everything seemingly going against us with, as I said, players leaving the pitch, very, very difficult for the players to regroup and go again, but they did second half. And yeah, it was just a wonderful feeling at the end and, and wonderful for the supporters, great. Um, atmosphere in the stadium it's as electric as I've known it um, and I even include the PSG game you know that last 10 minutes was it was amazing to be part of really as soon as we scored the, the second goal I think they believed um, and, and I think we believe with them and then it goes to um, three all and you just hope they can suck one in and they did and, uh, Harvey's uh, two goals were incredible I thought yeah I think we saw Harvey there um, that that period of time that he was on the pitch he nearly scored back post um, and then his two goals the one-on-one -on -one wasn't easy I was no. right behind it and he had a lot to do. Goalkeeper, I thought, made himself big, but he found a way to score. And you look at his goal-scoring record through the years, it's incredible for a wide player. Yeah. But his, his winning goal deservedly won that game because it was an outstanding finish. So Eddie Howe did his best to describe what we've just seen there. 110 minutes of football at St. James's Park. That international break was long. It wasn't as long as that stoppage time in the second <laughs> half, I'll tell you that for a fact. Like um, Dubai trip, man, they've done the world good. I'll tell you what, wait, wait, do you want to wait, should we go to Dubai? Yeah, well, it'd be lovely, <laughs> wouldn't it? It would. Um, right. Injuries, injuries, injuries. Lascelles, Almiron, anybody else? Yeah, Livermento, how bad does it sound? I think out of the three, Lascelles looks the most serious. Because Lascelles is a bit of a warrior. He doesn't want to come off, and I get Andy's point earlier. Why was he allowed to come back on? But that's the mindset of him. He wants to play for, he'll play for the pain barrier. But the other two are probably just niggles, I would have thought. Touch wood, where's wood? There's none. Touch wood. Um, Miggy one I'm not that concerned about because Harvey Barnes is I think is a better footballer overall overall, but still you still want options. If Miggy if Miggy is injured and out for the rest of the season. Harvey Barnes. No 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 but if Miggy is out and injured for the rest of the season, has he played his last game for Newcastle? And I he'll say yes. Um should have asked him that, but I think um Harvey Barnes for me, he's just gotta stay fit, but Livermento, you might not make Tuesday, but Trippy I might, because Trippy I was close today, so I mean we're in trouble if we're in trouble if not because you can't have Kraft right back. You, I mean, I mean, the, the kind of left hand side and the centre back sort themselves out. Burn shifts across. Lewis Hall has to start. I think we've all, think we've all forgotten somebody. What? Kieran Trippier. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. If, if Trippier is back, then fantastic. I think, I think, but um, I mean, I'm seeing this on video. I hope um, Emil Kraft can handle Dwight McNeil. So I'll be a bit worried if he if he can't on Tuesday night. Or, but. or you play Murphy and you play Anderson on the wing. But I think. 
with it uh, touch upon as well, because I think a loss today, Johnny, ends year for me. Yeah, and that, that, I'm going to touch about the table in a second. And Andy, the changes were what were the difference? What won us the game? Harvey Barnes with the two goals, but I want to talk about Lewis Hall because of me. What I've seen from him in a Newcastle shirt in the last couple of games, he can't be any worse than what we've got. If anything, is he even better than what we've got? We're not, is Eddie Howe not giving him enough minutes, enough credit in the bank? Because he was absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, not even the attacking side of things, defensively, it was, abs- it was, it was comfortable. I like that. You said the last couple of games you've seen him in, yeah. and it's like the last few months yeah. we've seen him in. He was absolutely incredible. He did, we talk about game changes, and it's usually like a winger, number 10. But for me, Lewis Hall came on in left back, and it's not often you see a left back will change the game. He nullified Kudos on that wing, and when he needed to be nullified, I think he dealt with Bowen well as well. And he showed that experience. Look, he's still very young. He had little experience for Chelsea last year, and he only came in as a left back because Kukurea and Chilwell were both injured. He came up through the academy as a centre midfield to. For me, to play the way he did on that left-hand side, he's done no wrong for himself and hopefully he does start on Tuesday night against Everton because he deserves to. Certainly. Um, A lot of questions would have been asked of Eddie Howe, in particular, if that didn't go the way it did. Just the fact that the substitutions that he brought on and the way he changed the game and and went for it, is that not, I'm not saying saved at criticism, because he gave her the big ones at the end, he gave her the fist pumps at the end. And rightly so. And rightly so. What is now the situation, Eddie Howe? Because it's, it seems to be external. It doesn't seem to be in the fan base. He's seen the war flags dem- uh, like displays before the game. I would say 98% of Newcastle fans are with Eddie Howe right now. They really, really are. And they want him to succeed. Yeah. Has he just shown today that he can succeed with a, bit, with a bit of time and a bit of patience? Yeah, he's made a mistake. He rectified it. And that's what I like about Eddie Howe. You know, He's not afraid to sub us up. And, and Kraft yeah. did have to come off because he was letting the team down badly. He took it well, to be fair. He didn't win, didn't moan. He just he, he accepted it. He even clapped the fans as he was walking off. Well, he, well, he has to because, yeah. you know, look what's happened when he's come off. Um, look, there, there'll, be time, there'll be a time for Kraft and, and, you know, he's done well and horribly in the past and whatever. And it's, it, it's one of them. But Howe has uh, rectified his mistakes. Some changes were forced. Um, some weren't. Some were strokes of genius. Um, he changed it up when he had to, 3-1 down. He kind of shifted to plan B. Um, he's done tremendously well and he absolutely was 100% correct to take in the applause and the plaudits for turning that round because that could, that, that no, not many would have done that. Last couple of quick, can I, can quick I, points. Like, Go on. Jump in because I think, he, I think there's some part of the game where you can criticise anyhow. I think defensively you still have because to. Because we can't, we kind of play like that every week. I'm sorry, like we kind of, we need a few one nils. We kind of just keep expecting. I mean, the neutrals love it, the TV cameras love it because you're going to get five, six goals every game. But we can't keep conceding twos and threes, especially at home, because that means the pressure's on the forward line and the midfield has to get forward. That there is criticism because it is. I hate, I hate references, but it is very Bournemouth style when he was at there. Yeah. But defensively, there's tweaks that need to be done. But he deserves all the praise today because there's been a lot of people, including our comments, that have been having a go on the last couple of weeks. The same people who are watching this tonight, especially if you're a match going fan, because I don't hear a match going fan saying, Eddie Howe out, Eddie Howe out. I never ever hear that. It's people who watch from home who are criticising Eddie Howe. Where are you today? I want to know from them people. Get in the comments them below because Europe is still on. It's still on, Andy. This is your updated Premier League table, but obviously we only know that Newcastle have moved up to 8th place in the Premier League table so far. They're a point behind West Ham. West, we do have a game in hand over West Ham, but it looks a bit more rosy, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we've just got to keep the faith. and uh, I, th- I think Europe is on, at, at the very least, Conference League. Um, and all we can hope for is the rest of the lads that are still in Europe can perform. And you know that we'll we get those extra places in the competitions, but... Europa, like the Europa Conference League at a minimum, great, but I think we can still push for Europa League and I think it's ours to take. Man of the match? I'd say Gorn. He just still, his energy was there the whole game, creating chances, but if anything, Harvey Barnes as well, just absolutely composure, can't knock it, he was absolutely incredible. Man of the match? Mohamed Kudas. Right, play it. Newcastle's man of the match? Harvey Barnes. Man of the match? Kudas. Newcastle's man of the match? Gordon. It's a full house in terms of the Newcastle side of thing. Well, nearly a full house. Because you went Barnes, didn't you? Three to one. I can see the loaded lads just just in the just in the camera. They're on their way. They're running. 
it's, it's the fastest I've seen them run, believe it or not. They should have done that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but it is... Hey! Come on! It's, it's nice Woo! to see you celebrate it? Hey! Do, you, do, you, do, you, do you want that trophy? And we just oh, I'll just take it back now. Yeah, we'll check it back. It's nice to see you celebrate something. I know, uh, thanks, uh, thanks. I'd much rather celebrate this than that yesterday. Right, one, how's quick how's question, one quick question for you. Man of the match, in a word. I'm going to say Lewis Hall. Gordon. Isaac. Harvey Barnes. None of, these have got it, none of these have got it right. Mohamed, no. Yeah. And, and, and Andy Gordon pretty much just about gets man of the match, yeah. It has finished Newcastle United 4, West Ham United 3. The women's games tomorrow, me and Lee will be there for Newcastle United versus Liverpool Feds. Newcastle United women need seven points from four games to get into the championship. If you've got nothing better to do, come along and support the lasses. Free, but, free travel. Free travel, even better, even better. And it's Everton on Tuesday night. We need to make sure we beat those. Please, we've got to beat Everton. Big thanks to Andy. Big thanks to Lee. Big thanks to the Lord of Lads. Big thanks to Sam. Big thanks to all of you watching. Oh, have a lovely weekend.